Welcome to today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. In our last episode, we talked about the wonderful seaside town of Tarifa. In today's episode, we're going to head to the north of Spain and visit the city of Santiago del Compostela. There is some really interesting history attached to this city. So let's jump right in to today's program. Santiago de Compostela, often simply referred to as Santiago, is a city that holds a unique place in the hearts of millions of people worldwide. Located in the northwestern region of Spain, it is the capital of the autonomous community of Galicia. This enchanting city is renowned for its historical, cultural, and spiritual significance most notably as the final destination of the Camino de Santiago, one of the most famous pilgrimage routes in the world. Before we delve further into Santiago, let's take a closer look at the region of Galicia. Like many other parts of Spain, Galicia has a long and complex history of settlement by various peoples and cultures. Galicia's early history is marked by settlement by Celtic tribes, who had a significant influence on the region's culture and language. The Celtic legacy can still be seen in aspects of Galician culture and language, which is called Gallego. In the first century BCE, the Romans conquered the Iberian Peninsula, including Galicia. The region became part of the Roman province of Galicia, and Romanization left a lasting imprint on the area. For example, the city of Lugo in Galicia is famous for its well-preserved Roman walls. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, Galicia came under the rule of the Visigoths, but the influence in the region from this Germanic people was relatively short-lived. During the Moorish occupation of the Iberian Peninsula in the early Middle Ages, parts of Galicia were periodically subject to Moorish incursions. However, unlike the southern part of Spain, these incursions did not lead to lasting Moorish settlements in the area. In the early Middle Ages, the Kingdom of Galicia emerged as a political entity. It was established as a separate kingdom during the Christian Reconquista, a period when Christian forces sought to recapture the Iberian Peninsula from Muslim rule. Today, like Andalusia, Galicia is an autonomous community in Spain. The process of granting autonomy to regions like Galicia was part of Spain's broader effort to recognize the historical and cultural diversity of the country while maintaining its unity as a nation. Today, Galicia is a thriving autonomous community with its own government and distinct regional identity within the larger framework of Spain. Galicia's status as an autonomous community in Spain was established through a process that unfolded during Spain's transition to democracy following the death of Francisco Franco in 1975. The creation of autonomous communities was part of Spain's effort to decentralize its governance and recognize the cultural and regional diversity within the country. Spain's transition to democracy after Franco led to the drafting and approval of a new democratic constitution in 1978. This constitution was known as the Spanish Constitution of 1978, and it laid the legal foundation for the creation of autonomous communities in Spain. It recognized the right to autonomy for various regions, including Galicia. 
to implement the provisions of the new constitution and establish the framework for Galicia's autonomous government, a statute of autonomy for Galicia was drafted and approved. This statute defined the powers, competencies, and governing institutions of the autonomous community of Galicia. To determine popular support for autonomy, a referendum was held in Galicia on December 28, 1980. The people of Galicia voted in favor of autonomy, with a significant majority supporting the creation of the autonomous community. Following the positive outcome of the referendum, Galicia officially became an autonomous community with its own government and legislature. The first regional elections were held in 1981, leading to the formation of the first autonomous government in Galicia. The autonomous government of Galicia consists of a president, a regional parliament, and a regional cabinet. The president of Galicia is the head of the regional government, and the parliament is responsible for passing regional laws and regulations. As an autonomous community, Galicia has the authority to manage its own regional affairs in various areas, such as education, healthcare, transportation, and culture. The Spanish central government retains certain powers related to national defense, foreign affairs, and other matters. The establishment of Galicia as an autonomous community has allowed the region to further promote and protect its cultural and linguistic identity. The Galician language Galego is a Romance language closely related to Portuguese and is one of the region's official languages alongside Spanish. The cultural heritage and traditions of Galicia, including its music, dance, and festivals, are actively celebrated and preserved. So now we have a better understanding of the ethnic and political heritage of Galicia. One of the things that we were really taken by was the natural beauty of this region. It has verdant hillsides and mountains set against the coastline. You add sunny days to the mix, like what we had during our time there, and it was difficult not to be awed by the gorgeous landscapes. My mom, sister, and I were born and raised in Washington State, and we all felt that the scenery was similar to what we experienced growing up. So how did that happen? Well, the region's geological evolution was influenced by the movement of tectonic plates as well as glacial impacts. Ice sheets advanced and retreated, contributing to the region's topographic features, including valleys, fjords, and lakes. The result of these geological processes is the diverse and rugged landscape of Galicia, characterized by its coastal fjords, rolling hills, lush forests, and numerous rivers. The region's geology and topography have also influenced its cultural and economic history, including its agriculture, mining, and the development of traditional architecture. Today, Galicia is known for its natural beauty and is a region with a rich cultural heritage. Now that we know more about the region, let's turn to the city of Santiago de Compostela. Santiago de Compostela's history is rich and multifaceted, dating back to Roman times. Its name is derived from Santiago, meaning St. James in Galician, as the city's founding myth attributes its origin to the Apostle St. James, whose remains are said to be interred in the city's magnificent cathedral. The legend surrounding St. James and Santiago de Compostela is at the heart of the city's history. According to Christian tradition, St. James, one of Jesus Christ's apostles, traveled to the Iberian Peninsula to preach the gospel. After his martyrdom in Jerusalem, 
his disciples allegedly transported his body to Galicia. In the year 813 or 814, during the reign of King Alfonso II, a hermit named Paleo claimed to have witnessed a series of miraculous events. These events led him to a site where he discovered a Roman tomb with what were believed to be the relics of St. James, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. King Alfonso II recognized the importance of this discovery and saw it as an opportunity to promote Christianity. He ordered the construction of a small church on the site to honor St. James. This church later evolved into the Grand Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, which became the spiritual center of the city and a major pilgrimage destination. So while King Alfonso II is often credited with the founding of Santiago de Compostela, it's important to note that the city's origin is closely linked to the legend of St. James and the discovery of his relics, which predate the city's formal establishment. That's all we have for today's episode of Places, People, Purpose. We hope you enjoyed learning about Galicia and Santiago de Compostela. In our next episode, we are going to learn more about Santiago de Compostela and the Camino de Santiago. We think you will enjoy these very much. So please join us for our next episode of Places, People, Purpose, where we create connections to our world. Oh.